This week on Culture Q, Vegas is calling and we've got the tea. We chat with Not OK director Quinn Shepard. And Raven's Home makes history with a new character. What is going on? It is Anna Lawani here. And I'm Cheryl Lazar. This is Culture Q. And here's some of the highlights from this week in Queer Culture. In the age of free the nip, Instagram has said, put it back, please. For years, transgender and non-binary users have fought with the platform over the right to show themselves without posts being perceived as sexual. Right now, any posts featuring female nudity are typically removed claiming users are engaging in adult sexual solicitation or encouraging escorting. Meta, who is the parent company for Instagram and Facebook, has now created an oversight board that will look at four cases regarding gender identity and nudity on Instagram. And there is one case in particular that has incited this investigation. An anonymous trans and non-binary couple were shocked when they got a notice saying images were removed from their accounts. The first pic featured both people naked from the waist up with flesh-colored tape on their nipples. Another image featured one of them covering the other's nipples with their hand. And the post discussed that one of the members was having top surgery and noted their plans to document it along with other trans health issues. The couple then appealed several times, but the company wouldn't budge, saying they stood by the AI moderation bot's assessment that the post violated community guidelines. Which guidelines, you might ask? They included soliciting sex, sexual misconduct, sexually explicit language that leads to sexual solicitation. So basically, an AI fail. Meta finally agreed to open the case up to public comments, and you can even submit yours until Tuesday, August 9th. Hopefully this vote will lead Meta to putting measures in place that actually protect queer users and keep us all seen and safe. It is vacation season, and we want to tell you how to get your gay on in Vegas with a few recommendations from us here at Culture Q. Let me tell you, Las Vegas has LGBTQ plus friendly activities throughout the city with something for everyone. For starters, try the summer's favorite hangout, Temptation Sundays at the Luxor Hotel and Casino. This poolside dance party runs until September and features specialty drinks and new DJs each week. And if you don't get lucky and score a date on your excursion, Vegas' Fruit Loop offers food, great music, and an awesome atmosphere. And if you're looking for a place to get your groove on, Vegas residencies have you covered. From country gems Miranda Lambert to Luke Bryan, the always joyous Katy Perry, and even Silk Sonic, Las Vegas has the shows you're dying to see. After a hot night dancing, be sure to head down to the Chic Arts District downtown. The Garden Las Vegas features talented drag queens every weekend at their bottomless drag brunch. Everyone can be themselves and just let loose and have fun. And the best part about it is that whether you're queer or not, you can just really be yourself and have a good time without feeling judged, without feeling like, you know, you're having to become something you're not. I mean, where's my invite? That looks like so much fun. Well, then say you want to kick it old school and want the traditional Las Vegas experience. Well, here's another option for you. One must-see spot on the Strip happens to be the Little Vegas Chapel. This place performs charming and tasteful LGBTQ plus marriage ceremonies, and you'll always have someone accepting and friendly to officiate. Speaking of hunks of burning love, there's also the Magic Mike live show at the Sahara. Personal favorite here for anyone who hasn't been to Vegas. Free your magic at Magic Mike Live, conceived by Channing Tatum only at Sahara Las Vegas. And again, there are many unique and fun options, including RuPaul's Drag Race Live at the Flamingo Las Vegas Hotel and Casino, Senior Frog's Drag Brunch at Treasure Island Las Vegas, and so many more queer delights just for you. If you still need help planning, Vegas has you covered with its How to Be Rainbow in Vegas series. There are three outstanding episodes with more to come featuring LGBTQ plus greats sharing their Vegas knowledge. Now that I understand what it means, I am queer. I am odd, I am strange, I am funny. I am not like you. Because if I were like you, this would be one boring existence. That's why Nevada is so important. The show is hosted by Miss Nevada, Cataluna Enriquez, the first trans woman to compete and win a title in the Miss USA pageant. This beautiful trailblazer brings on celeb friends to showcase the many ways Las Vegas has opened the city up to people around the world as a safe place to embrace their authentic selves. There wasn't the exposure that there is today for just being and living a normalized gay life, you know? And then it grew into this amazing liberated town that was just full of opportunity. 
So in the end, be sure to plan your trip to Vegas at visitlasvegas.com and go get your queer on from all of us here at Culture Q. What's better than a Hollywood love story? A queer Hollywood love story. Quinn Shepard, the director of Not OK, recently said more than OK to her longtime girlfriend, Nadia Alexander. If you didn't know, Not OK follows Danny Sanders, played by Zoe Deutsch, as she scams her way into being a national sensation. She fakes a trip to Paris and discovers that a terrorist attack has taken place just five minutes after she posted. And as you can see, when faced with a decision to come clean or be famous, Danny chooses the latter and it changes her life forever. Not OK also stars Nadia Alexander as Harper, a young queer writer who is immediately suspicious of Danny. Interesting article pitch. Thanks. Hey, Susan, I just uploaded the new draft for Tuesday. Thank you. And true to a Hollywood rom-com, Shepard and Alexander met and started dating after Alexander starred in Shepard's first feature, Blame. The movie is also on Hulu, and you can check out their amazing chemistry yourself. And the movie magic continued off camera, with Alexander finally popping the question, and it was all captured in a series of adorable Instagram posts. On a chilly New York night in front of the Lincoln Center at 1 a.m., Alexander told Shepard they were going to make a TikTok. Then Alexander got down on one knee and offered Shepard a ring, pop. Shepard screamed at the longtime joke between the two and really thought it was a ring pop until Alexander revealed it was a box holding engagement necklaces. When the two do get married, they want to get tattoos instead of rings. Okay, stop being so cute. Alexander did mention that when looking for matching engagement rings, you only get a clearly masculine one and a clearly feminine one. That just seemed silly to her. So instead, the necklaces were perfect compliments to each other, just like the two ladies. So congrats to the happy couple. We obviously couldn't get enough of Quinn Shepard, and we luckily got a chance to chat with the star herself. Take a look. Have you ever wanted to be noticed so badly? Hi, hey, Mom. You wanna hang out tonight? Oh. You didn't even care what it was for? All in. I was What up, honey? Danny, from work. Danny. Yo, Colin, I love your videos, man. Aside from a massive proposal like we just talked about, Shepard is currently being hailed as the future of cinema. After writing her first film when she was just 20, the multi-hyphenate actor, director, and musician developed an impressive eye that brought her to her latest project, Not OK, airing now on Hulu. So I started writing this film in 2018, and it was very much like inspired by just like how I was feeling at that moment in time that is sort of still the feeling <laughs> that I'm having, which was she's very much like overwhelmed by the amount of like horrifying political news, but always next to like the most like silly, like, oh, an influencer ad or, oh, like get by the skincare. And it was just like reading about very real things next to very superficial things on a daily basis. And like getting that information with equal coverage was such a bizarre feeling. And I think it was creating for myself and a, a lot of people, like a lot of just anxiety and like a very unsettled feeling. I wanted to use a concept that captured like both the darkness and the absurdity there. And that's sort of where this was uh, born from. Oh. Like 2677 now, right? Danny? Danny, she's okay. I think I still sometimes struggle. Like, I mean, like, obviously, with everything that's been going on in the last few months with like uh, Roe v. Wade, and like, there are days where you're like, I just want to see somebody's vacation photos. Like, I don't want any more unprecedented circumstances. I just want something stupid to look at. Take a photo with me for her. Yeah, of course. Oh, thanks. I really appreciate it. Mm, where's my chapstick? Like, she's a product of uh, the wrong reward system. And even though I think she does a lot of terrible things, I think there's a bigger critique of the systemic issues that I was trying to achieve. <laughs> and she's definitely doing it. Shepard's eclectic personality and her passion for the project is all over the screen. When I was a kid, I always was like, what am I gonna do? Because like, sometimes I wanna write poetry, and sometimes I wanna like look at fashion, and sometimes I like to do like, you know, photography, and sometimes I like writing, and, and it, film is just everything, which is, the best, that's why it's my favorite medium. It's like the perfect blend of all of all art forms. It's amazing to hear from Shepard herself. And if you wanna catch Not Okay, you can stream the movie right now on Hulu. This week in the US, we're celebrating American Family Day. And here are three films on Reverie that explore families of all kinds. 
Our first selection is Change in the Family. This documentary chronicles the transgender transition of Zoe Thorpe and the sympathetic response of his family. It's also a story of celebration, health, and unconditional love. The film presents a much needed portrayal of trans and gender non-conforming lives in America. Obviously Zoe is still Zoe, but now there's a new person. <laughs> Next, there's 1985. Having been gone for three years, closeted advertising exec Adrian returns to his Texas hometown for the holidays during the first wave of the AIDS crisis. Depressed and feeling alone, Adrian looks to reconnect with his brother while navigating his relationship with religious parents. This daring film stars Corey Michael Smith, Virginia Madsen, and Jamie Change, along with a cast of award-winning actors. 1985 takes a unique look at a pivotal moment in American history through the prism of empathy, love, and family. We pray that there are many more days like this to come, many more memories for us to look forward to. We pray that you'll continue to teach us how to love each other unconditionally, just the way that you love us. And finally, there's Gaberhood, a mock reality series set in Chicago's LGBTQ neighborhood, seen through the lens of a wacky and outrageous group of friends. Using satire and over-the-top humor, Gaberhood provides a reverent commentary on reality TV and queer culture. From narcissistic drag queens and sex addicts to fish out of the water Midwest gay folk, and of course, everyone's favorite, Firefly, constantly on the search for love. This guy I'm talking to on Grinder right now seems kind of hot. I saw the picture you sent, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> right? That was not me, that was Tay Diggs. You can catch all of these titles and so much more streaming right now on Reverie. Now here's the thing, I'm so excited for this story because Raven's Home, the popular spinoff from the Disney Channel classic that I grew up with, That's So Raven, has always looked to the future and it looks even more inclusive with this update. If you didn't know, That's So Raven was the first show to break Disney's 65 episode rule, coming in at 100 episodes over a four year period. This set the stage for successes like Hannah Montana, The Wizards of Waverly Place, and more. Now Raven's Home is setting the stage for the success of marginalized actors too. And Raven's Home recently introduced the first ever trans character on Disney, played by a trans actress. All right, I want a good, clean model off. The rules are simple. Whoever impresses me wins. Whoever impresses me wins. Fine, us. <laughs> actress Juliana Joel, who plays Nikki, Raven's messy but free assistant, announced the news on Instagram and went on to include a personal story that happened with Raven on set. I told myself that I wasn't young enough to be on Disney anymore, and even if that wasn't the case, I'm trans. Needless to say, I cried in my dressing room after walking onto that set for the first time. Episode writer Nori Reed took to Instagram too to share this. Growing up as a young queer person, I never got to see my own experiences and identity reflected back to me on the TV screen. This unfortunately provided a very clear message. This world isn't for you. Together they brought Nikki to life. And of course you can see on that episode is appropriately titled The Fierce Awakens. Be sure to check this out and I'm sure you're gonna love it just as much as we do. As a Raven fan, I'm very excited for this. Definitely, and this type of representation makes such a difference for so many kids out there. And with that, that's all for this week for Culture Q. I'm Cheryl Lazar. And Anna Wani signing out. Thanks again for hanging out with us this week. And be sure to join us every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, live and always on demand, right here on Reverie.